honoring the brave men and women who served our country this Saturday during the Pittsburgh Veterans Day Parade. And former Steeler player John Banizak was chosen to help lead the event. He joins us now to talk about his experience with the Marines and also about leading the parade this year. Thank you so much for taking time to be with us. Oh, you, thank you. So you were chosen as this year's Grand Marshal. What did that phone call? What was that I, like? I really <laughs> had no idea that um, that I was going to um, participate in the parade at that extent. Um, and I've done it before, but just in, you know, walking the parade route and that type of thing. But to be the Grand Marshal of the parade is quite an honor. What do you think about the Pittsburgh Parade for Veterans Day? I, because I, it is something really special and to see the support that's out there and to see all of the men and women who have served from our area walking together in solidarity, it's something. Well, I know at one time there were more veterans in, in the Western Pennsylvania area than in any part of the country. And I'm sure that is uh, pretty close to being true again. But to be able to share um, the day with all the veterans that'll be in, involved in the parade is, is something that hopefully my grandkids are able to understand and, right. and, and be able to know the importance of it. So what will your role be as Grand Marshal? What will you be doing during the parade? I'll be waving to all the people <laughs> out there. Your arms will be tired right. by the end of it. <laughs> Correct, yeah, absolutely. It'd be like a pretty good workout for me. <laughs> Do you get to ride in a cool car? Or? I think I'm in a Corvette, okay, which, is, which is very nice. And hopefully it's a new one. And we were just talking about this too, because this is so this is so neat. They're actually doing a flyover for the first time yeah. during the parade. We talked with uh, Chris earlier today on Correct. Pittsburgh Today Live, and he said he got he called the 9/11th open and put in the request thing, and they were going to do it, and got a call from yeah. Langley. They're sending four. That's that's amazing. If you've um, never been to an air, an air show, yeah, uh, it's really exciting to have those things fly over. I mean, then they do it at stadiums. So in the middle of a football or the start of a football game after the national anthem, they'll have those jets flying over the stadium. But it's really something to see to it experience. Is. It is. Can you tell us a little bit about your time serving in the Marines? Sure. I spent two years in the Marine Corps out of, right out of high school and um, went through Paris Island um, at the height of the Vietnam War. Look at you there. And um, yeah, it, it was, you know, pretty, it, it was the best thing that I could have done at that particular time. Um, football was not a part of my life at that point, although I played high school football, but I wasn't good enough to get a scholarship. And so um, I come from a family of eight and my, my father, my parents couldn't send me to, to school. So my dad said, GI Bill is what will pay for it. So yeah. boot camp Paris Island was the real deal. Um, it certainly uh, straightened me out in the ways that, that I needed. Yeah. And um, fortunately, I, was a, I took a typing test at boot camp. And, um, and I could type 60 words a minute. So even the Marine Corps needs typists. So you stayed? You stayed? And I did. You didn't have to go to Vietnam. I said. did not go to Vietnam. I took, did a Mediterranean um, tour, um, well, not a tour, but uh, and and things worked out pretty well. And then when I was getting out of the Marine Corps, I wrote a letter to a coach who recruited me to Kent State, and um, told him I was getting out of the Marine Corps. He invited me to come up and and play. No. Uh, and so I went to Eastern Michigan without ever seeing the campus or anybody. Wow. But the, the second guy I met on that campus was our head coach, Dan Boyster, who wow. was a Korean War Marine. And of course, once a Marine, always a Marine. That's right. And um, I knew I was at the right place at the right time. It really, serving really shaped the rest of your life. You were able to go on from there to play for the Steelers. It did. I would not be here today if it weren't for my decision to join the Marine Corps way back in 1969. Well, you know, we say that, you know, on Saturday we are going to honor the men and women who served our country, but it's really something that should be done every day. Oh, I absolutely agree with that. There's no, no doubt about it. And the Marine Corps also is on, sat on Friday is the 248th birthday of the Marine Corps. And we celebrate that day very... Um, Take it very seriously. We do. Yeah. There's no question about that. It was a joy to be able to talk with you today. Thank you for taking time to be with us. Well, you're welcome, Heather. Thank you. And thank you for your service to our country. You're quite welcome.
All right, well, you don't want to miss this. The Pittsburgh Veterans Day Parade kicks off at 1030 this Saturday morning. It starts at the intersection of 10th and Liberty Avenue. The fighter jets will also be flying over the Ohio River and then up the parade route. It will be something to see and the first time it's been done, they think, in the history of this parade. That starts at 1130. Well, still to come on Talk Pittsburgh, empowerment through exercising. We're telling you how different businesses and organizations are coming together to reshape how women in Pittsburgh connect.